So in part one, we went over the legal position on Article 370, the rise and fall of militancy in the valley, the exodus of Kashmiri Pandits and the historical perspective of the autonomy of Jammu and Kashmir. Now let's come to the role of the armed forces, the rise in stone pelting and the use of pellet guns, cases of human rights violation and how they are dealt with, the difficulties the forces face and the bullying the locals face, also the role of local police and their relationship with the Indian Army. It's the second episode and this time too, let's talk about Kashmir. Is that a legal option, Azadi? Everyone wants it, from the journalists to the stone pelters to our JNU ke Kanhaiya Kumar. Sabko chahiye, kya chahiye? Azadi. Is Azadi even a legal option? Azadi is not a legal option. Azadi can only be won, so-called freedom fighters, militarily defeat the Indian Army the way the Bangladeshis defeated the Pakistanis with the help of the Indian Army or the way the Eritreans defeated the Ethiopians. You have people running in the streets there. If you were to individually call them and say, Beta, what is it that you want? He will be, he will be ill at ease to define that objective to you. Anyone can see that it's very clear. We do not want to be part of the Indian state. We are not part of the, in, of the Indian state. And the sense of not wanting to be part of India, you will find in pretty much every voice you hear on the ground. If there are ones that do want to be part of India, you don't hear them. I do believe there are some, but it would be hard to be vocal with that position in the valley. The shooting to death of Burhan Wani by the Indian forces on the 8th of July 2016 led to massive protests in the valley. Burhan Wani's funeral saw almost 200,000, that's 2 lakh people, flock to the streets of Srinagar. This is significant because this is not the same thing as many innocent teens who've suffered at the hands of armed forces in Kashmir. There have been cases of innocents dying down the years because of military action and massive crowds gathered at the funeral. This time it was in support of a man who had stated that he wanted to establish an Islamic caliphate in Kashmir using the gun. He was a commander of the Hezbollah Mujahideen, like full legit, this is not a rumour or a Twitter type fact, it's a real fact. How did it get to this? How did a man like Burhan Wani get such sympathy in the valley? Here is Colonel Chadda. Like uh, some of the boys who we've spoken to in Kashmir, they say we are picked up, no FIR is lodged. Like we are kept in a thana for a month, slapped around and then sent That's home. That's the point that I'm making. It's not the army which picks them up. Correct. No, but <laughs> it's now, the local police. Yeah, but now, uh, now the PSA is the Public Security Act, is the act which is used against some of these people for local disturbances. So the stone throwers will get picked up and they will be jailed under PSA. Now you can be jailed for six months without anything happening thereafter. Right. Right? So who is it that is doing it? It's not the army. It's not the RR. They're not involved at all. I was a huge opponent of the pellet guns, and I still am. But if we get real, are there any better options? Now, we must be able to distinguish between this group because a lot of people say, you know, if you have charge, you can't do it. If you have a tear gas, you can't do it. If you have a tear gas, you can't do it. If you have a South Block, you can't do it. Parliament, you can't do it. Why can't you do it? You have to realize the differentiation of these different groups. So How this is a mob is this which has lynched policemen. This is a mob from within which grenades have been hurled. This is a mob which has thrown a vehicle with the driver into the jailum, leaving, leading to the death of that driver. They have ripped up off the doors of bulletproof bunkers. Now, if that is the ferocity of this mob, then you cannot equate this mob with any other group which is protesting in the country. Because a lot of people say Bangalore, mota, ke nahi karte, Delhi, mota, ke nahi palette, use karte. there is a differentiation. Whether it is a lati, or a tear gas shell, or uh, uh, the 12 bore uh, uh, gun which is being used. Any of these are designed in a way that under certain circumstances they should not cause fatal injuries. Hmm. But to say that a lati cannot cause a fatal injury is factually incorrect. Uniting that part of Kashmir is what is called Pakistan occupied Kashmir, and this part of Kashmir under one government would be impossible and the biggest mess for anyone who tries to control it. 
also kashmiri pandits or any other minority wouldn't stand a chance of surviving in that environment so this is the best pakistan will not let go unless it completely crumbles or disintegrates which will not happen in the near future so what then is it a stalemate is it a deadlock is it forever or is it a marathon and that country or party that can stay the longest and take the most punishment and take the biggest beating but continue holding on will finally be able to resolve this there is no quick solution not in the foreseeable future but that is not what i was trying to get to through this podcast i was trying to give you dear listener a slightly deeper look into the kashmir tangle than what you may have had so far what i was trying to do was to make you hear a few more voices understand a few more perspectives and empathize with a few more experiences than what you may have been exposed to so far there is no one reality and that is the reality of kashmir and its biggest misfortune that was just a sneak peek because this episode is behind a paywall if you want to hear the entire episode and more amazing podcasts like let's talk about and nl hafta subscribe to news laundry support independent media support news laundry